um, had a really bad day. Probably one of the worst days I've had in a while. It's really, um, it's really got to me. Sometimes, with a condition like ED has, sometimes it's worse, and sometimes it's better. And sometimes you can be better for a longer, and then all of a sudden, it hit you like a brick. Then you will not be ready for the pain. Oh, the feeling of vulnerability that comes along with it. I'm at my mum's house tonight. Um, I woke up really poorly. So she came over and got me and took me to her house so that you know, I've not got the kids around. Jumping all over me and stuff. And obviously, Murray's there looking after the house and the kids, so. It just gives me someone here to help look after me. But I can barely walk. I've dislocated my left shoulder. So that's absolutely killing me. I really don't feel so great about myself right now. The feeling of weakness in my muscles is really bad. The thing that gets me more than anything is I don't know why it happens and I don't know if it's just me but whenever this happens my brain likes to remind me of how strong I used to be and how active I used to be. How much I used to be able to do in a day. The fact that I've had to come somewhere else away from my children. That's, that's the hardest part. Surprised knowing that they're gonna grow up, seeing this, and they're not gonna know. What's going on? I think it's one of the reasons I wanted to come here today was because it is so bad that I didn't want to see me like. joint instability that comes with EDS is due to the fact that your ligaments become quite lax. So your muscle starts trying to do the job of ligament and muscle and eventually your muscle it can't do that. It has, it has to have a break. It just gives out when that happens. Your joints have no stability. I feel like recently I've been really Pushing my luck with my EDS, and when I woke up this morning, I woke up and walked to the bathroom, and every step I took, the pain got worse and worse. And by the time I got to the bathroom, I realised what was happening, and that I was like having a flare. But I'd got up in a hurry because we were meant to interview Toby's nursery today, and. We woke up late and I literally, I woke up, Murray woke me up and I said, Ashley, wake up, we've overslept. And I woke up and I sat up quickly and then just got up and started walking. And every step I took, I thought, ow, ow. And then by the time I got to the bathroom, I just, I just collapsed down and I was like, what the hell? 
remember so I had me back to bed. I sat there and I just the pain that ran through my body. I felt like knives in my joints. So I put my joint supports on. But it, <laughs> we have to cancel going to see his nursery, so we're going tomorrow instead, but I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to. I don't know how to not let my hideous affect my children's life. And I don't want it to, but I don't know how. <sighs> I just I wish I could give them somebody else as a mum. <laughs> somebody who was about to leave. <laughs> somebody who could run around with them as much as they wanted and <laughs> could work really, really hard for them. <laughs> But this is what it does, it robs you of everything. <laughs> I love my children so much. So much it hurts, that's how much I love them. And I would do anything for them. I would. It doesn't matter how much pain I'm in, I would always, always do whatever my children need. But. I get scared that as my condition gets worse, I'm not going to be enough for my children. And I don't know what to do about that. If I'd have known, if I'd have been diagnosed earlier, I never would have had children. Not because I don't want my children, but because the biggest reason, obviously, is passing it down. But to put them through this. For them to see me like this. <laughs> when I was growing up, my mum got diagnosed with cancer. She was sick for a really long time. <laughs> and I was on my own a lot. <laughs> and it really affected me. It really affected my school work. It, it affected everything. I missed so much school. And I had to work really, really hard to get my A-levels and go to university and get a good job. To then have this take it all away. But one of the biggest problems for me was I couldn't get anybody to take me seriously. No matter what doctor I saw, this is how the my body hurt. My joints hurt. My age was consistently a factor. It was, oh, you're only nine. Growing pains. Oh, you're only 12. A hormone imbalance. Oh, you're only 20. You're overworked. Oh, you're only 24. You're either, like, could be depression. Could be depression induced pain. And I knew, I knew my body. And I knew it wasn't any of that. 
And by the time I finally got a doctor to listen to me, it was too late. I was already pregnant with my second child. Then there are people out there who will say, well, if you were in pain, was it not irresponsible to go ahead and have children? But everybody kept telling me it was in my head. Everybody. The only two people who believe in my mum and Murray. All my friends said it was in my head. They all called me a liar. <laughs> and I went undiagnosed for so long that my certain things I've done in my life has sped up the progression of my illness. I don't really know what I'm trying to say in this video. I just needed to talk about it. <laughs> if you are ill, and you know you are ill. <laughs> believe, believe in yourself. And if you are a doctor watching this, <laughs> please don't take people's age as a fact. <laughs> believe in your patients. Because, yeah, zebras are rare. Zebras are rare in the medical community, but they're there. And they're crying out loud. The weirdest thing when you're ill is when you get to a point where you're like this, where there's visible evidence. You want to go back to all the people who told you you were faking and you want to rub it in their face. You want to say faking it, was I? Look at this. Look, there's my genetic test. There's my diagnosis. You want to take every hospital admission every surgical admission just rub it in the face but for every good video i upload i just want everyone to know that this is what it's like this 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 is the true reality of ets i don't really do look Every single person that watches and shares these videos. <laughs> because every time you do, you're getting the word about us out there. You get the true face of chronic illness out there. The real face of chronic illness. <sighs> oh, it's pain. I feel as happy. As healthy and as pain free as possible. Bye, everybody.